Well, good afternoon, and in behalf of the bride and groom and the family of the bride and groom, we welcome you to this joyful and yet solemn occasion this afternoon as we unite in marriage Matthew Tyre and Amy Williams. To begin the celebration and service this afternoon, I would ask you to bow with me in prayer, and let's ask the Lord's blessings upon this occasion. Father, we thank you for the privilege to gather here together today. We thank you, Lord, that in your wisdom, you determined in the beginning that it was not good for a man to be alone, but you brought unto the first man a help that was meet or suited for him. And Lord, we acknowledge your divine wisdom and your divine plan wrought out of your goodness. Lord, we pray today now that you would be honored, that you would be glorified as Matt and Amy are united in marriage. Lord, we pray today that this would be the beginning of a wonderful testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ as husband and wife they go forward together. Lord, we ask that you would direct, that you would would lead, that, that you would be pleased with what is done here this afternoon. In Jesus' name, amen.
be seated. Sonnet 116. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever-fixed mark that looks on tempest and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark, whose worst unknown, although his height be taken. Love's not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. Married love. Married living needs the continuance of the dash and sparkle of romantic love. But the relation of romantic love to married love is somewhat like that of a little tree to the larger tree which it later becomes. It has life and fresh young energy that enables it to grow. When it has grown into a larger tree, its heart and vitality are still there. But with continued life, it has taken new rings of growth. Its branches have spread wider and its roots have gone deeper. Moreover, it bears flowers and fruit which the little tree did not produce. Married love is love woven into a pattern of living. It has in it the element of understanding and of the passionate kindness of husband and wife toward each other. It is rich in the many-sided joys of life because each is more concerned with giving joy than with grasping it for himself. And joys are most truly experienced when they are most fully shared. What is love? What is love? No words can define it. It's something so great only God could design it. Wonders of wonders beyond man's conception and only in God can love find true perfection. For love means much more than small words can express. For what man calls love is so very much less than the beauty and depth and the true richness of God's gift to mankind, his compassionate love. For love, have, for love has become a word that's misused, perverted, distorted, and often abused. To speak of light romance or some affinity for a passing attraction that is seldom much more than a mere interlude or inflamed fascination, a romantic fling of no lasting duration. But love is enduring and patient and kind. It judges all things with the heart, not the mind. For love is unselfish, giving more than it takes. And no matter what happens, love never forsakes. It's faithful and trusting and always believing, guileless and honest and never deceiving. Yes, love is beyond what man can define, for love is immortal, and God's gift is divine. Amy, Matt, welcome to one of the most memorable days of your life. Other than the day of your salvation, your wedding day is the most sacred of all. And I don't use the word sacred lightly, because marriage is a holy institution designed by God and intended to illustrate his own relationship with his bride, the church. We now live in a culture that's redefined marriage and family. And there are many who are fighting to abolish the concept of a biblical family altogether. Their hatred for biblical marriage stems from a rebellion against God and a rejection of his truth as given in the word. Christian marriage has become controversial, but that's not new. There was an occasion when Jesus' enemies attempted to trap him in a controversy about marriage. In Matthew 19, the Pharisees posed a question to Jesus, hoping to trap him in his words. And they failed, because instead of getting into an argument, he answered them directly from Scripture. Because it is in the Bible that we find all the answers to life questions. Jesus took them back to the beginning of the Bible, and he showed them God's definition of marriage and God's design for marriage. Here's what Jesus said, Matthew 19, verses 4 through 6. He answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And he said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. God's definition of marriage is the union of one man and one woman for one lifetime. And it's been that way since the beginning in the Garden of Eden. 
As you read the creation account of Scripture, you will notice that at the end of each day, God looked at what He had made and He declared that it was good. The first time God says that something was not good is found in Genesis 2.18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. God said that the single man that He created was not good yet. In order for God to declare that man was good, as he did for the rest of creation, God took a rib from Adam and made a woman and brought her to the man. Adam recognized the perfection of this new creation that God made just for him and said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And it's then that God declared, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. That's God's definition for marriage. And God's design for marriage then is that the woman complete the man. By himself, Adam was not whole. He needed a help meet, a suitable helper who would walk beside him and assist him in doing what God created him to do. The role of the husband is to lead. The role of the wife is to assist. This is God's design, and it's a design that cannot be improved. It's best. Marriage is sacred, but not just because God is the one who instituted it, but because of what it illustrates. Marriage is an illustration of Christ's relationship with the church. Ephesians 5, 22 through 25 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ... So let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Let this sink in for just a minute. The reason that Satan tries so hard to destroy biblical marriage is because it is at its roots an illustration of the gospel. Now both Amy and Matt are believers There was a point in their life where they realized that they're sinners and they needed a Savior. And they trusted the Lord Jesus Christ to save them from their sins. They confessed their sins and their faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And because of their faith in Christ, their sins are forgiven and they have eternal life in heaven. And now they are entering into a marriage that is intended to be an illustration of that wonderful message. Matt, you're supposed to show the world how much Christ loves and cares for his bride by how you love and care for Amy. And Amy, you're supposed to show the world how much the church loves and respects Jesus by how you love and respect Matt. Now, there are going to be hard times. and There are going to be days where you may even be tempted to give up on your marriage. But when those days come, remember the gospel. It's the message that brings salvation, not only to you as an individual, but to your marriage. The gospel will save your marriage if you will live it. Matt, if you will love Amy like Christ loves the church, if you will nourish her and cherish her, if you will give yourself for her like Christ did for you, then your marriage will be secure. And Amy, if you will submit to Matt's leadership like the church submits to Christ, and if you will show him love and respect, Be his biggest fan and his best cheerleader. Your marriage will be secure. Determine to make your marriage a gospel marriage. In just a few minutes, a change is going to take place in your life. A change that God intends to be permanent. Pastor Butler is going to lead you through your vows, the exchanging of the rings, and at the end, he will declare you to be husband and wife. From this day forward, the two of you will be one in God's eyes, and together... You will be a living illustration that there is a creator. And the creator loves his creation so much that he sent his own son to die for the sins of the creature. Your life will never be the same after today. You will enjoy a level of happiness that you've never enjoyed before. You will find in each other the best friend that you could ever have. You will personally experience the final act of creation 
that was necessary for God to call everything good. May your marriage be one that God can look at and declare good. And may your marriage glorify your Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather to celebrate and to witness the wedding of Matt and Amy, we want to pause and say thank you for loving us so much to send your son to this earth that he might die for our sins so that we might be forgiven and have eternal life with you in heaven. Lord, I know both Amy and Matt's testimonies of salvation, I know that they have made the decision to trust you. But there may be someone here today, a friend or a family member, who has never in their life confessed their sin and their need of a Savior and made that decision to trust Jesus. Lord, it's our prayer that even at a wedding ceremony, this person would understand the gospel that Jesus Christ died for them on the cross to pay for their sins, that he was buried and rose again and offers them eternal life if they will accept it by faith. And Lord, we pray that they would make that choice. And I pray for Matt and Amy. Bless them, Lord, with a long and happy life together. I pray that this new home that today you are creating would be one that gets you much glory. Guide them, give them wisdom, provide for them. In short, we pray for your blessing upon this wonderful couple. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor Chambers, for a message that is spot on, not only for this couple, but for this entire congregation. Matt and Amy, this is your wedding day. In a very certain sense, a day of new beginnings for you as you take up the privileges and responsibilities of married life and as you more completely than ever before serve the Lord together. On the other hand, just as this is a day of new beginnings for the two of you, it is also, in a sense, a day of realization and completion for your parents. This is a day for which, by the Lord's grace, they have sought to prepare you. God gave you to them as babies, not to keep for themselves, but to love, teach, train, and raise up for the fulfillment of His purpose and His glory. I'm certain that your parents thank the Lord for you, for His working in your lives, for saving you, for molding and shaping you and making you the testimonies of His grace that you both are today. And now this congregation rejoices that the Lord has brought the two of you together to serve Him as one. This being said, we come now to join you together, Matt and Amy in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God and commended in Scripture as being honorable among all men, and not by any to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but in the fear of God. If anyone here can show just cause why this couple may not be lawfully joined together, let him speak now or else hereafter forever hold his peace. Matt and Amy, if either of you know of any reason why you may not be lawfully joined together in marriage, I ask you to declare it now, knowing that if any persons are joined together other than as God's word allows, their marriage is not lawful. Matt, will you have Amy to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony, 
Will you love, comfort, honor, and keep Amy in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only unto her, so long as you both shall live? I will. Amy, will you have Matt to be your wedded husband, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony, Will you love, comfort, honor, obey, and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only unto him, so long as you both shall live? I will. Matt, will you please repeat after me? I, Matt, take thee, Amy, I, Matt, take thee, Amy. to be my wedded wife. And I do promise and, I do promise and, covenant, before God and covenant before God and these witnesses, and these witnesses to, be your loving and faithful husband, to be your loving and faithful husband in plenty and in want, in, plenty and in, want in joy and in sorrow, in, joy and in, sorrow in sickness and in health, as long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Amy, would you please repeat after me? I, Amy, take thee, Matt. I, Amy, take thee, Matt. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. And I do promise and covenant before God. And I do promise a covenant before God. And these witnesses. And these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful wife. To be your loving and faithful wife. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Matt, do you have a ring for Amy? Would you please place that on the ring finger of her left hand and repeat after me. Amy, this ring, Amy, this ring I, give you I give you in token and pledge, in token and pledge of, our constant faith of our constant faith and abiding love. And abiding love. Amy, do you have a ring for Matt? Will you please place the ring on his third finger of his left hand? And will you repeat after me? Matt, this ring, Matt, this ring I, give you I give you in token and pledge, in token and pledge of, our constant faith of our constant faith and abiding love. And abiding love. You may light the unity candle. God's gift. The sun comes up and I can feel it lift. My spirit fills me up with laughter, fills me up with song. I look into the eyes of love and know that I belong. Bless us all.
bless us all with playful years, with noisy games and joyful tears. We reach for you and we stand tall. And in our prayers and dreams, we ask you, bless us all. We reach for you and we stand tall. The marriage service leaves, leaves us looking out along a road that leads to, on to the possibility for endless joy. There will be hardships along that road and disappointments. To travel it will require strong disciplines and intelligently worked out ways. Much that is ahead is uncertain, but some things can be depended on as absolutely sure. Faith, Hope, love, abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. The bride and groom can set forth with high hearts because they have faith in each other, which is founded on their faith in God. They can face the future full of hope because they know what will bring their marriage its daily comforts and ultimately success. Side by side, they can start down across the years, held to each other by a love whose source is in the heart of God. For as much as Matt Tyre and Amy Williams have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God in this company and thereto have pledged their faithfulness each to the other, and have declared the same by giving and receiving a ring and by joining hands, I now pronounce them husband and wife in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Matt, you may kiss your bride. It is with great joy that I now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Matt Tyre.
The bride and groom request the pleasure of your company at a reception in just a few moments over in the church fellowship hall. And they will be joining you there after a few moments for photographs. Please follow the walkway to the double door and you're dismissed.